So the next model that we're going to look at is quadratic models. We've done linear models, we've done exponential models, and now we're going to look at quadratic models. A quadratic function is of the form f at x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now when we look at these, um, at the a, b, and the c values, the a value if a is greater than zero, meaning it's a positive number, that means that my quadratic is going to be u-shaped, and therefore the quadratic would have a minimum value, which would be right down here. If, however, a is less than zero, which means it's negative, then that u is going to be flipped upside down, and instead of a minimum value, we are going to have a maximum value. Notice that a never equals zero, and that's because if a equals zero, this term would go away, because zero times x squared would be zero, and we would just be left with bx plus c, which is linear. So that's why a can't equal zero if it's a quadratic. Um, the c value is another important value in the quadratic function. It is the y-intercept. And so the y-intercept is if you put zero in for x, if I put a zero here, that wipes this term out, and I put a zero here, that wipes this term out, I'm only left with c. And so the y-intercept is 0, c. All right, so let's look at our first example. Let's consider the quadratic function f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. Find the x and y-intercepts. So when you're looking for x-intercepts, that means you're going to let y equal 0 because it's where it crosses the x-axis, and on the x-axis, every ordered pair is some number comma zero, because the y-coordinate is zero. So let y equal zero. So we would say that zero equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. Now you've got a couple options here. Um, most people would use a calculator and find the zeros. There's actually three different ways to find x-intercepts, also called zeros or solutions. just want to clarify that many times this question will be asked, what are the zeros of the quadratic or what are the solutions? That means x-intercepts. There's actually three different ways to find um, solutions or zeros or x-intercepts. One way is to factor. That tends to be the way people don't like um, to use the most. Another way is to use the graphing calculator. And a third way is to use the quadratic formula. On this particular one, let's go ahead and use our calculator. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone in my calculator to y equals and I typed in the quadratic 2x squared minus 3x minus 2, and I'm going to graph it. Right. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the zeros. The zeros are where it crosses the x-axis, so right there and right there. So in order to find those zeros, I'm going to go to second, Race, and I want to calculate the zero, so I'm going to go down to zero, and I'm going to hit enter. Then, when you see this, I always call it a spider. When you see this little flashing spider or star, whatever you want to think of it as, um, I need that's going to be the thing that I'm going to move along my quadratic. When you're looking for a zero, the first thing it says is left bound. I need to have the spider to the left of the zero. So if this is the zero that I'm looking for, if I'm to the left, I'm going to be 
above. So I'm going to use my arrow keys, left and right arrow keys only. And we're going up, but you go left. Now, as soon as I'm above, as soon as I can see that I'm above and to the left, I can hit enter. Then I'm going to arrow to the right, and I'm going to be to the right, and in this instance, below, and I hit enter. I don't want the guess, the guess is not the answer, and I hit enter again. And it gives me the zero, negative 0 0.50. All right, so one of my zeros is negative 0 0.50. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my calculator, and I'm going to find the other zero, this one is right here, by going to second trace. Using zero from the menu. And now I need to make sure I'm to the left of this zero. Now some of you might be saying, well, you are to the left of it. I am, but I'm closer to this one. So what I have to do is I've got to move past that minimum or that vertex and be on the side of the vertex that's closer to this zero. Otherwise, what it's going to do is just keep finding this zero again. So I've got to cross past that vertex. And now if you notice, I'm to the left and below. Now for this zero, I was to, when I was to the left, I was above. Um, you have to realize left and right is relative. Um, you and I could be standing next to one another, and you could be on my right-hand side. As soon as I turn around, we're still next to each other, but now you're on my left-hand side. That can happen. So left and right are relative terms. For this zero, left is below, so I hit enter. Now I'm going to move to the right. And now I'm to the right and above. I hit enter. And I hit enter one more time. I don't want the guess. And I get two, zero. So I'm going to put that answer now on my paper. So 2, 0 is my other x-intercept, or 0, or solution. All right, now I want to find my y-intercept. And y-intercepts are found by letting x equal 0, because you cross the y-axis when x is 0. So that makes it pretty easy. y just equals 2 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 2. Well, all of these just cancel out, and I'm left with negative 2, which makes sense. Remember, we said this right here, this c value, is the y-intercept. So y equals negative 2, so 0, negative 2 is my y-intercept. Now, the next one, letter B, says determine whether the parabola has a maximum or a minimum point and find its coordinates. Okay, so when I first look at this, let's say that I had not graphed it. When I look at this parabola, I look at its A value. It might not be a bad idea to label that this is A, this is B, and this is C. In other words, A equals 2 b equals negative 3, and c equals negative 2. Well, since the a value is positive, that means this quadratic opens up, which means it's going to have a minimum value. Now, if we were going to use the calculator, we could do it very quickly, and I'll show you how to do that. So we can find that minimum value by going to second trace again, just like we did for the zeros. But now, rather than choosing zero, we're going to choose minimum. Hit enter. Now this does left and right. Now it doesn't matter above and below. I need to be to the left of the minimum. And obviously this right here is the minimum. I need to be to the left, so I hit enter. Now I need to be to the right. I hit enter. And my minimum value um, is written right there. Okay, so my um, minimum value is 
it said 0.749999, so we'll say 0.75, and negative 3.125. So that is my minimum value. I want to also, um, it did ask whether it was a minimum or maximum, so it was a minimum. Another name for it in general is, it's the vertex. Whether it's a minimum or a maximum, it's the vertex. So we have um, the minimum value is 0.75, negative 3.125. Now, what if we didn't have a calculator and we had to figure it out without a calculator? Well, I can figure out that it's the minimum, as we said, because it opens up, so it's a minimum. The formula for finding the vertex is that the x value is the opposite of b divided by 2a, and the y value, you sub in the x value. All right, so let's do that real quickly. All right, so if we were to do that, I would look back at my original equation, and x would equal the opposite of b, which would be positive 3, because b is negative 3, Opposite of b, positive 3, over 2 times 2. So we get 3 fourths, or 0.75, which is what we got right here. Then what you could do is you could take this 0.75, or this 3 fourths, and you could put it into this equation and solve for y. All right, let's go down to learn a little bit more about quadratic models. Let's look at a specific one here. Isaac Newton showed that the height of an object at time t after it has been thrown with an initial velocity v sub 0 from an initial height h sub 0 satisfies the following formula. A couple things that I would like to point out. Um, first of all, this is a formula that you're going to be using a lot if you're taking physics. Um, anytime something is sub 0, that means it's the starting amount. That's before any time has passed. And this is always the formula. G stands for gravity, and gravity is either going to be 32 feet per second squared, and, um, or it's going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And the reason uh, this formula works, and you think about it, it's a quadratic that's A value is negative 1 half. So it's a quadratic that looks like this. Well, anything in this world, because of gravity, when it goes up, it has to come back down. That's why we're going to use this formula when we look at problems such as example two, where we're throwing a ball. When you throw a ball, you throw the ball, it goes up, it comes back down. We're going to look at this for problems like, um, you know, throwing things off of a building. When would we ever throw something off of a building? I'm not really sure. However, um, that's a lot of the examples that we look at. Throwing things off of a building, because even in that scenario, if you have a building, let's say this is my building, and I throw something off, it goes up and it comes back down. That's part of a quadratic. Um, sometimes we'll, they'll talk about uh, cliff diving. If you could think of this as the cliff, you jump up and then you come back down. All of these are scenarios that would use this formula. All right, so um, let's read example two. It says that a ball is thrown upward from a height of 25 meters with an initial velocity of eight meters per second. So the height of 25 meters is where it's thrown from. So that's gonna be my h sub zero. Initial velocity is my v sub zero. Notice both of these are in meters, therefore my gravity is going to be my 9.8 meters per second squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a quadratic model to describe the height and time after the ball is released. So h equals negative 1 half times 9.8 t squared plus v sub 0 is 18t plus h sub 0 is 25.